All right, let's pick up where we left off uh, with this implicit differentiation stuff. All right, so example two, same thing as before, find dy dx or y prime, if you would rather, uh, of each function. So same thing, just remember, every time you take the derivative of a y term, you need to multiply by that dy dx uh, or the y prime. Uh, in FYI, the book is always going to use dy dx as well as myself, uh, but if you want to use y prime instead, totally go for it. All right, so the derivative of 2x is just 2. The derivative of y squared would be 2y, and we just did the derivative of a y, so dy dx, plus the derivative of tangent secant squared, and I just did the derivative of a y again, and then the derivative of 4 is just 0. Okay, so now I've got, I have my derivative out, now I just need to solve for uh, dy dx. So just like I did in the last example, we're going to pull the dy dx out of 2y plus secant squared. And then I'm also going to move this 2 all the way over to the right. And now I can just divide and get the dy dx by itself. And we are done. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to part B. Part B is a little interesting. Um, just depending on how you look at it, because it's ln of x times y is equal to y. Um, so there are a couple ways you can approach it. One of them is you can leave this function the way it is uh, and do the derivative of that ln. Uh, just when you do the derivative of the inside to put it on top, you're going to need to use the product rule because that's a product. Um, but we can avoid that because we can use those log properties and we can split this ln up before we find a derivative. And that might be uh, a little bit easier. Um, okay, so let's get the derivative of this stuff. So ln of x is just 1 over x. ln of y, 1 over y times dy dx is equal to, and then the derivative of y is just dy dx times 1 if you want the one there. Okay, so we gotta solve for that dy dx. <clears throat> um, but a lot of times when we solve stuff and we're, uh, we have fractions involved, it's not a lot of fun to work with the fractions because you're gonna have to um, get common denominators and stuff eventually, maybe divide by a fraction. Um, so what I like to do is clear out all the fractions, not the dx part, because I'm solving for that whole thing. So I'm trying to get rid of this x and this y. So I'm going to take the entire equation and multiply by x, y. You don't have to solve it this way. Uh, it's just a nice way to clear off all of your fractions. Um, so there you go. Okay, so this x, y gets multiplied to every term. So when I multiply it to this first fraction, I get y. When I multiply it to the second one, I get x dy dx. And then to this dy dx is just xy dy dx. Now you don't have any fractions to really worry about, um, so it's a little bit easier to solve. So let's move this term all the way over to the right. And while we do that, we might as well factor out the dy dx. You can pull the x out if you want to, you don't need to, because uh, you're not solving for x, just the dy dx. So now just divide. And there's your dy dx. Okay, so this is one way to do it. Uh, in the actual note key, um, I did it a different way, so you can check that out. Um, and in the denominator, you could have this factored, or you could leave it like this. 
All right, let's try example three. Find the equation of the tangent line. Oh, that means you're looking for y equals mx plus b as an answer. So find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of, oh gosh, that thing at this point. Okay, so do you need to use implicit differentiation with this? Well, the answer would be yes, because you have x and y together, um, and you don't have like y equals uh, a and a bunch of x's on the other side. So if it's not solve for y, then you're gonna have to either solve for y first and then do the derivative or use implicit differentiation uh, at the start. So this one, not very fun to solve for y, so we're just gonna use implicit. So the derivative of x is one. Now I need to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top, and when I'm now, right now, I've gotta use uh, the chain rule. Uh, so the power comes down. Decreases by one. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. Which would be two times dy dx. And then times the bottom. And then minus, now it flips. So the derivative of the denominator, using the chain rule again. Derivative of the inside is a one, so I don't need it. And then times the top. All over the denominator squared. Okay, now what the book tends to do, or if you go on to CalCHAT, they're gonna take this whole entire thing and they're gonna solve for that single dy dx. And you can totally do that, you can get an expression for it, um, but I'm not gonna do that because it didn't ask for it. I wanna know what's the tangent line. This is what my answer is supposed to look like, not this. Um, so I'm gonna leave it alone um, because all I need out of this is just the slope. So I'm gonna plug in the x and the y and when I do that, the only variable <clears throat> that remains is the dy dx. <clears throat> and it's a little bit nicer to solve if you do it this way. So plug in your point. So 1 equals. So 1 goes in for y. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the third is still negative 1. And then you still have two dy dx right here. Uh, and the negative three goes in for x. Negative three plus four is one. One to the fifth is one. So that just kind of gets knocked out. Minus five times, that's gonna be one again. This is gonna be negative one in there. So negative one to the fourth is one. <clears throat> Uh, all over, uh, negative three plus four is one again, one to the 10th is one. So now you've taken this big old nasty looking thing, you've plugged in your numbers, and hey, that's a lot nicer to deal with. Because really what you're solving for is one is equal to negative eight dy dx minus five. So add over the five, Divide by negative eight, and your dy dx is a negative three fourths. <clears throat> okay, so that is your slope. So just use point slope formula to finish it and get your line. So y minus one equals negative three fourths times x plus three. And then just solve for y. So distribute, and then we'll add the 1 over to the right. So negative 3 fourths x minus 5 fourths. So there is the equation of your tangent line. Okay, so I'll stop the video here and pick up on the next one.